so today I'm going to start the project the music server project that is okay so let's get on with the installation part of it I already took everything out the box as far as the case is concerned and I showed that to you in the last video and here's the power cord here's the Ethernet cable and the other part of the power cord this is the power adapter first we're gonna do some a little assembly and then I'll switch camera view so you can see me actually put in the drive inside the case okay so let's proceed with the case assembly so what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide this off there's two screws that goes into these two holes right here in the back there's one right here one at the bottom but it didn't come with the screws already installed because they're in the box so what we have to do now is just to slide this part off by just grabbing one side and pushing on the other which is going to take this part come straight off inside the case we got the two slots for the drive one at the top and one at the bottom so basically all you're going to do is line up the little pins on the back of the hard drive and just slide it in there into the slot and it's going to snap into place you just got to give it a little nudge okay so on turning this thing over on this side I notice it says hard drive one and hard drive two on marking on this side of the panel which I think they should have also put it on this side of the panel too just in case because I didn't see it over here but when it's flipped over to putting the screws in that's when I noticed it says hard drive one and hard drive two so hmm oh well what we're gonna do is just take those screws out and put it back on top because since this is the first drive I want it to be in hard drive one slot that way I can remember in the future which drive is which all right so now that we got the screws in there it's all locked in place on both sides we know that hard drive one goes on the top so if you get this case no second guessing if you have one drive it goes on top and your second drive goes at the bottom so that part of the task is finished so now we can slide the case back on because there's nothing else to do that's the cool thing about these newer hard drive is the fact that you know there's no wire you know I've started my days where you had to hook up the wires and hit the power wire and put the data cable wires and all this stuff these new drives ever since they invented them it's like mm, the best drive because the pins just slide and hit each other so now all I have to do is put the two screws in the back to lock this case so you know the things don't slide open okay so now that we have the drive installed and the screws already secure in the back of the case it's just a matter of hooking up the power cord, plug it up to the computer and start installing the necessary software to get this thing rolling and get my music server started. And then I can start transferring files once I get this whole thing set up. It's telling me to go to the web browser and type in HTTP colon slash slash find synology.com or I can use my mobile phone to find it by scanning the QR code I think I'm gonna use the first one on the list and hopefully that gets the ball rolling but first don't forget to hit the power button because if you're searching for it in the browser and you can't find it is because it the power is not on so let me hit the power button right now and make sure that blue light is blinking I can hear the drive spinning up I got a land so now the disk light is on okay so I'm having a little trouble with the web client so I'm gonna try to set it up through the mobile app so I already downloaded the app by scanning the QR code and now I'm gonna go to the sign up procedure make sure your mobile phone and NAS are on the same router yes it is power on the NAS and wait until you see the status indicator orange light or hear a beep sound which I already did so now it's telling me that the DSM is not installed so I'm gonna install that right now so now it's warning me that the drive needs to be installed and it will be formatted now there's nothing on the drive so that's fine so I'm gonna click OK and now it's installing the DSM software so right now it's at 50% it's saying that it's gonna take about 10 minutes total to install this but in the movie magic process we're just gonna speed up time okay so the installation is finished and it's in the process of restarting and of course during this installation and restarting it's saying do not power off the NAS now it's telling me that restart is going to take a short time but my countdown timer is telling me I still got eight minutes plus left so in the fashion of movie magic we're gonna speed up time again okay so the NAS has restarted and it went from an amber to now it's a green light on the status on my setup screen it says to set up the DSM account okay so I was having a little issue uh, trying to create an account on the app so I'm not sure what's going on so I went back to the web 
address that came in the book and now instead of giving me that error message that it was giving me before now it said that it found at this station so let's try to connect and see what happened okay so now i'm on the screen that tells me to create my administration account so i'm gonna go ahead and do that right now okay so now i gotta create a quick connect so let me go ahead and set that up right now and now i'm on the screen where it says it's got some recommended packages that it wants to install there's no way to deselect them, so the only thing you can do is say next. Well, you can skip this step, but we're going to say next. So now I'm at the home screen. At the home screen here, I can see my package center. I can see my control panel and my file station and a little help icon. So I want to go into the package because I want to install the Plex. So I'm going to go in here and then I'm going to search for Plex. And now it's doing the installation process. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do is go to the Plex website. Before you go any further on the server, but it's gonna say sign up or sign in. And you have to just choose the appropriate one for your needs. So once you make that connection between your Plex account and the server here, then it's gonna come up to this screen, right? Which is basically just showing you how Plex works. So you, if you already know, you say you got it. Okay, since you went past that little screen right there that's telling you how Plex work, now you're going to come up to the screen that says Plex Pass. Now this is optional, but I would recommend you get it because you get a whole bunch of enhanced features. You know, one of them is like the premium music magic that it says it does sweet fades, loudness leveling, and lyrics and more. So that's part of Plex Pass. You got the live TV and DVR that you can use. And I wonder if that works with the Fire TV recast. I don't know, I have to research that. You got a server dashboard, you got parental control, and they got mobile sync. Plus in order to stream outside your home to your mobile phone, you might be on the road and you might wanna access your pictures, your movies, or your music outside the home then you're going to need a Plex Pass for that. And if you can afford it, I would go with the lifetime plan. Because if you go with the monthly, yes, it's $4.99, but it's going to keep adding up, adding up. And before you know, you're going to surpass that $120. If you go with the yearly plan, it's only 40 bucks, but every year you're going to spend 40 bucks. And you realize that once you start using this kind of stuff, you don't want to let it go because it works so sweet and it makes your life a little bit more convenient to access all this stuff. Swing the 120 and just pay a one-time fee, lifetime, you get free updates, you don't have to worry about it anymore, and it's free for life. So when I see these things with these kind of plans, I usually just sign up for the lifetime and just call it a day because it's just cheaper that way. Now after you do that, it's going to take you back to the web version of Plex but you want to be on the server version because the URL that I'm looking at right now doesn't match up my server. I'm going to actually close this out. So once I get back to the package center on the server, I'm going to click open, which is going to take me back into the server version of Plex. Let's click download because I'm going to do the update. Might as well. It's always good to have the latest software running, you know, so you don't have any issues. Now, this is how you're going to install manually. First, you want to click the download and then you want to save the file. It's going to go to your download folder. So once the file is downloaded, then you want to close out the Plex and then you want to go to manual install to your right. You want to click browse and then you want to find that file that you just downloaded, which was the Plex SPK. And then uh, I'm going to click open next. And then I just have to wait because right now it's processing that file. And that's how you do that update. Anytime it says manual install, Basically, that's how you do it. Okay, so looks like the update was successful. So we're going to go into Plex again by clicking open. And now I have a little yellow bar up top that says unclaimed media server has been found on your network. Claim it now. Yes, we're going to claim it. And you can know when you're on the server because it has your IP address in the address bar. Can't show your mind, but you know, trust me, when you see the 192 that one six eight that one whatever number you have then that's where you know you have it set up that way okay so after you click the claim server button it's going to go to some stuff and then you want to like close out after that you know close the plex tab again one more time and then you want to go over here and click open and once you open it, it's going to come back and you should see your server name, a little lock by it and no more orange bar because now everything is set up for your server. OK, so now that you have everything set up, where do you go with the Plex Pass, the monthly, the yearly or the lifetime? You claim your server, 
one more thing you need to do is set up remote access. Now remember the remote access is only available to people who go with the Plex Pass. So from your home screen, let me go back to home. You want to go to settings and down there where it says general, you want to go to remote access. So you want to click on that little tab right there and then you want to enable remote access. And remote access is going to give you the ability to access the server outside your home. So you can stream your music while you're in your car, Bluetooth it into your head unit. You can watch whatever movie that's on the server outside the home. But you know, all of that's available once you add more stuff to it. Right now, it's gonna be concentrated on music because I have music on so much different drives. So all these music that I have in different folders and on different drives, I wanna consolidate them into one and I have that one meter sort where I have access to. All right, so that's gonna be it for this video. I don't wanna overcrowd it with too much information right now. I want you to take you through the steps of setting up the drive as far as installing the hard drives and everything and then set up the plex pass installing the software and all that stuff i hope it was understandable and if you have any questions just leave in the comment and i will help you out okay so stay tuned to part three of this video and in the meantime if you want to start looking for all your media or finding all those drives that you have your files on you know your music files just go ahead and gather them up so you can have them all ready to go when I show you how to add them to the server. All right, so that's gonna be it for this video. Stay tuned and I look forward to see you next time. Have a good one.